Okay, so this is the monthly budget worksheet. And it's very, very simple. I'm sure you can figure it out, but there's just a couple things that I wanted to go over real quick. First is monthly income. And there's a couple different ways that you can do this. The one is the most accurate, and that's just by trying to figure out exactly what your monthly income is. Most people don't do that. Most people just do four weeks of income and call it a month when obviously we know that four weeks is only 28 days, which only February is 28 days. So there's generally a couple days left over there. So the other way is to just put the four weeks in. And that's what I usually do. The reason is because it's more conservative and because it's a lot simpler. So I would put four weeks of exactly what my check says, my net income right here. And then at the end of the year, I will end up with about four weeks of extra income that I did not consider. So as long as my budget checks out and I have at least a zero, hopefully I have money left over, but at least a zero, that means that I have four weeks of income at the end of the year that I did not consider in my budget. That should be truly extra income as long as I did it the four week way. Otherwise you can be more accurate and just do the, a full month and have to figure out the extra couple days um, to put in there for income. And then there's other uh, additional income here that you can enter. Down here is the monthly expenses. And obviously there's quite a few of them. I don't have probably even half of these monthly expenses, but I wanted to include as many as possible so that I can remind you of anything that maybe you forgot. Because if you're like me, when you sit down with a paper and a pencil and try to come up with a budget, you're just going off the top of your head and you're trying to figure out how much you spend on this or that. And you're probably going to forget a few things. I mean, you're not going to forget the mortgage. You're not going to forget the heat, but you might forget subscriptions. Um, you might forget to factor in some clothing or something like that. So I wanted to put as many categories so that even if you do normally have a budget, a template that you like to work with, go for it. But maybe just look through this and see if you're missing anything because Again, if you miss something and this comes to zero at the end of the month, technically it's not. It means you're actually losing money because you're forgetting some expenses um, that you were not considering. So, and then there's these at the end here are more what I consider annual expenses. So, you know, house repairs, renovations, that's difficult to prepare for. So I usually plug a number that I think I might spend or might want to budget for. Um, vacations, I wish I took a vacation every month, but I do not. So that's another one where let's say let's say I was going to budget $2,000 this year for a vacation. I just do $2,000 divided by 12. That comes out to $167 a month, and that's what I would budget there in the vacation category. Um, so you may want to, that's why I grouped them all down here is because they're all kind of more annual expenses in my mind. And so um, you'll need to do a little figuring for that. Um, obviously, it totals it up down here for you and then there's a few extra spaces for other loan payments other than student loan payments um, credit cards car loans the kind of stuff that's up here already and then the last thing is is straight to savings i like to put that in there because it's a good reminder that we need to be budgeting for savings instead of just hoping that at the end of the month we have some money left over to go into our savings or our retirement fund if you'd rather um, I like to plan for it and try to budget it in as best we can. So um, take a look at it, and if you like to use it, otherwise use whatever else you got. But just take a look at it and make sure that you're not forgetting any uh, different categories. Thanks.